and so forth. And we'll just do a video tutorial on how I make my bread lately. So first, I've got uh, wheat berries, about 200 grams with uh, 50 grams of buckwheat thrown in there. Um, so just been playing around with wheat berries. This is, of course, the fancy part of this. The sourdough is like a mess around with them. So this stuff's been soaking for about 8 to 10 hours. We'll see how it works. I've had issues when I don't soak it long enough. Okay, so once that's done, just throw it back in where it came from. As long as I've been soaking it in the same camera over there. So the basic recipe I'm making is 200 grams of wheat berries, uh, 50 grams of buckwheat, a uh, good amount of water. I use 1.6 as my ratio for the water. Um, and then, so I guess 320 plus another 80. So that was about 400 grams of water. And then <clears throat> 200 grams of flour. So it's a mix of 50% uh, uh, ground up wheat berries and 50% um, uh, ground up normal flour. I'm using just got a thing of King Arthur white bread flour and really happy with it on my last loaf, so I'll see if it holds up again this time. And for meals, I usually do a similar amount of sourdough as my wheat berries, so, uh, so I do like 100 grams of sourdough starter. So here's the starter. This time he happens to be really happy. Uh, unlike some folks online, I do not run out on my sourdough. Um, as long as it's Doing okay, then I'll just throw it in. There's no need to, I don't think there's a need to geek out, but I'm also not trying to make it perfect for the best loaf in the world. I'm just trying to make something that's uh, edible. I'm going to take days to eat it, anyways, so it generally goes through a whole process of going from good to bad. I went all the way down to almost nothing. Almost there. Mm. So, some people like to use their hands. I just like to use the implement here just because it's um, just. Um, Less messy. Uh, this stuff, the initial autolyze is really good. You really get dough all over your, sticky dough all over your hands. After this, it's all by hand, but I do use a tool at this point. So just mix it up till it's all combined. Nothing, nothing too crazy. And just a big mush. So, Give it a little time to analyze, and it will uh, gain some gentle playing, and it will come to hang out. It's 6:50, so in 10 minutes I'll do the analyze, or I'll start folding the brick. Maybe with the video on, just for giggles, I'll try doing the folds earlier after I beat my sourdough, just to see what happens. Um, I'll let it sit a little bit to be happy. Yeah. Well, it on it. Okay, well, a little. <clears throat> so feeding the sourdough, that's very simple. You just do one to one. So since I got some good goop in here, I'm going to use it. So when they first tell you, they say you have to be super careful about your measurements and whatnot. And I feel like once you get a feel for it, you realize measurements aren't that important, but it is important for a cookbook writer because they're trying to convey some difficult information that's, or information that's difficult to convey. So that makes a certain amount of sense. I mean, at some point, you just think when it feels right, do it. So, so let's see how much. Is this? So, 143 grams. Oh, I don't know, I'll put 140 grams of flour in here in a moment. So, let me just get the water all nice and mixed up. And then, once the water's more or less nice and mixed, then you can add flour. I'm going to use a little bit of cheaper flour that I got. I want to spend, I'm happy with the red flour, so I want to spend it on just a starter. Normally, I just use the same flour as my normal. And then, what I do with the starter is very simple. I get this all nicely mixed up, and then I just throw it back in the fridge. I don't. This guy's a tough little fella, we'll put up with whatever I do generally, as long as I feed him every week, every other week. And I should be baking at least once every other week or so. If I really have to, I do pancakes, they burn through a lot of starter in a short amount of time. <clears throat> Given how low I made this bowl of starter, normally I don't take it down this low. It will take them a certain amount of time to uh, get it back up and running again. Um, so if I wanted to make a second loaf of bread this weekend, I would have to leave it out and get it going. I don't feel do that. It's so yeah, here's the starter. Just, just a big goopy mess. This is one to one looks like. We have one to one ratio. 
sorry about it. Put it back in the fridge. Just to stall for a little bit. So, okay, I guess I stalled for enough time now. So, one last ingredient to go in here. Salt, about 2% plus or minus. So, 2.5% actually. So, my typical recipe would be like 10 grams. I have 400 grams of flour in here, so I do about 10 grams. Since I'm going a little less on salt, I stopped at about 7. Same difference. Again, after you feel it, then you'll be able to just it out. So as far as holding the bread, take your hand and get your hand wet, get it in there, pull it out. There's a nice. Like that. When you start, it's going to... This one is really wet. This is not something I would recommend to a starting beginner. But if you do a classic kind of 1-3-4 ratio, so if you do one part uh, starter, three parts, um, three parts water, and then one part, um, or four parts flour. So if you had 100 grams of starter, you would do 300 grams of water and 400 grams of flour, just white flour, no big deal. Um, it'll shape up pretty nice. This one's actually coming together good. I tell you, this bread flour is really, woo, look at this thing. This would not be possible with that other flour I was using. That thing would just be an ungodly mess. Um, but, um, I might have to just, that's a King Arthur bread flour, and that thing's, I'll just say, it is pretty awesome. So, I'll just do this once in a while, every half hour, every hour. Uh, let it sit, uh, when it about doubles in size, I don't know, that one said doubles in size. This thing's going to totally loosen up and be quite low, it'll eventually end up, when I see a poofing around the 2 liter to 4 part. So I guess it is about doubling in size, I know it's about time to do it. It can go a little bit earlier, it can go a little bit later, you don't have to be perfect, you just kind of have to be in the general vicinity. Uh, my process is a little too loose for me to give good instructions. Uh, all I can say is you're going to fail a few times, or a lot of times. It took me 21 days of trying before I got a really good love. But um, just keep trying. Uh, you can do small loaves, it's the same concept. Um, what I'll do is I'll bake it in the Dutch oven, so I will boop, 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 plop it in, uh, preheat this, pull it out, plop it in here, bake it, and then you're done. If I remember, I will try to record that as well. But uh, if not, uh, you can certainly use a small loaf. If you use a smaller loaf, you can always use a, a smaller thing to bake it in. You know, uh, so I, I first tried with like 100 gram loaves or 200 gram loaves, and then just use like one of these things with a, just a metal lid that can handle on up to 450. So just about try, play, see where it goes. And uh, that's about it. It's about 20 minutes since I ended that last video. You'll see the thing has relaxed quite a bit, just very uh, just flat now. So I'm gonna do a second fold. Just try to scoop underneath, pull up, and drop down. Um, normally, on a second fold with normal flour, I would not be getting this kind of fold. Uh, it would be much, much looser. So this King Arthur flour, like I said, I'm obviously this is my new best friend. But um, if I'm feeling frisky, I can always wet both hands and then pull it out and then combine. Just get it nice and smooth, and then dump it back in there. Let's see how nice it is. Oof. Wow, that's amazing. This is not what I normally get with flour, so don't. If you don't happen to have this awesome bread flour and you haven't been messing around with folding bread for a while, uh, it may not come this easily. Uh, like I said, I'm even I'm impressed with myself, and I know it's not me. It must be the flour. So, um, but whatever flour, whether cheap, whatever, you'll you'll work. You just you might have to play with it more. Uh, I think the operative term for all this is just play and see where it takes you. Okay, so this was after the third fold. Looks pretty nice, nice and round, nice and smooth. Can't complain. It's uh, 8.44, I'm going to do one more fold before throwing it in the fridge. Decided to uh, um, bake it tomorrow morning instead of this afternoon. So I'm going to go ahead and slow this baby down and then I'll get going again in the morning. Um, the typical recommendation is to let the bread sit for half an hour. To let it kind of settle in, I guess, keep the moisture. Um, but Chad Robertson of Tartan also says, hey, there's nothing like just freshly baked bread out of the oven. And to be honest, I agree with him. So I have gone from being relatively careful to let the bread rest a little, to slicing the butter as soon as it's cold enough to touch, which I guess still gives it another 10 minutes because when it comes out about 450 oven, you're not going to be cutting it right then, right then. But here's the bread. Uh, so it's going to go uh, hang out in the fridge for the uh, rest of the day, and I'll be back tomorrow morning to do the bake.
So it's April 5th, Sunday morning, and here's the bread. Uh, let's see how it's risen. Uh, this did not all rise in the fridge. I actually took it out and left it out in, uh, um, left it out outside for last night, knowing that it wasn't going to rise fast enough if I just left it in the fridge. I'm going to last my bread. So I'm going to do a pre-shape right now. I'm going to get the stove going, and then once the stove preheats, I'll do a shape and then toss it in, and off to the bake we go. Uh, this will just be the pre-shape right now for this clip because it's going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to go ahead and do this while I'll put it off. That's out of it. Do the spatula. Screw it up a little bit. So this one is risen to the point where it may have overproofed. I knew it was a camel. We'll find out when I actually shake this thing. Normally I would have a bigger cutting mat or a on a granite countertop, I would shape it on the countertop itself, but this is plastic laminate at this house, so I'm using this little pizza pan I got one day at a uh, random resale shop that I ended up at. So for the pre shape, it's just. See, I'm cutting it close. <laughs> so I'm just trying to get this to be a nice round. But the other thing is you don't want to overwork it, so it may not be pretty. I think I'm going to let it hang out here because there will be a final shaping. I'm really close to moving around things, so I'll be back real short and uh, we'll uh, do the final shape and uh, toss in. So um, a lot of people will preheat the entire Dutch oven. I don't. My lid's right here. Uh, I leave the. I just found that having the lid hot as well as the bottom made life just that much more uh, frantic. So um, I only preheat the bottom and then um, once the oven preheats, I don't find much value in letting it over preheat. Um, I feel like the cast iron most likely catches up pretty quick. So in a case like this, when it's really close, then I certainly won't be letting it uh, preheat more than necessary. Um, but I do want to have a hot bottom. If the bottom of the Dutch oven is not hot, then the dough will stick to it uh, when you try to pull it out. So. Uh, like I said, we'll let it uh, finish preheating and I'll be back with the. Okay, so it's been 15 minutes. Um, the oven is preheated, so time to get ready to throw the thing in. <clears throat> uh, I've tried various ways to keep my hands from getting too messy when I do this, but uh, I've never had much luck. So I'm going to try the latest version, which is using water to keep my hands from sticking to the belt. You can see how flat this fell. Um, so this is a sign this thing is very close, if not already overproofed. We'll find out the hard way in just a moment. But um, it's, if it's really overproofed, it would really uh, be all over the board, so I think I'm okay. So this is the tool that I use, it's from the Tartan book. I don't actually know if it matters, my, everyone seems to have different folding techniques. Um, <clears throat> I, my bread always just ends up being about the same shape, um, for whatever process I use, so this could be just superstition, but, <clears throat> but that's how I do it. There we go, that's it. Uh, they say don't overwork it. That is definitely right. You do not want to overwork your bread. Uh, then it'll come out really small and dense, and that's the biggest one. So now you are dealing with a 450 degree cast iron Dutch oven. Uh, so the usual warnings apply. I chop it one, two, three. This is where having a not hot lid is really nice. <clears throat> and then back in the oven it goes. So this will be covered for half an hour. And then we will uh, take a lid off and we'll see what it looks like. And that is Christmas anytime you do it. It is really one of the more enjoyable things about baking this bread this way in the Dutch oven. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, it's 6.26. Time to take the lid off. Uh, mostly we have to take a photo for the bread. Open it up. Remember, this thing is hot. If I had uh, kids at home, I'd And I'll be back for the final... Uh, Post bake in 20 to 30 minutes, depending on where it's at. Uh, at this point, you just kind of look for a golden brown, and uh, when it's done, it's done. It's uh, 6:45, so it's time to have a peek. Let's see what's going on with this fella. That is pretty nice. I'll be greedy. I'm gonna let it sit for another five minutes, and then I'll be done. I lost track of time a little bit, so it's been about 10 minutes. Uh, bread should be fine. So let's go ahead and take it out. I mentioned touch up and very hot. Ooh, bread. Nice and brown. So, most likely a touch overcooked, but nothing. Nothing too bad. Yeah. 
So there's a hello. Um, I guess I'll throw in a couple of photos at the very end uh, after I let it sit for a second and cut it up. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's, uh, most people recommend letting it sit for at least half an hour. Um, but uh, I have found that just getting it as fresh, as hot out of the oven as you can handle is actually by far the tastiest in a weird way. It's super tasty when it's fresh out of the oven, and then when you let it sit for a couple days, there's a certain level of complex flavor that kind of pure out after a couple days. Um, I didn't really notice it until I hung out with some dudes that was really into coffee and they mentioned you know, that there was an ideal time after a roast for their coffees. But like I said, the, the initial cut of a bread when it's fresh out of the oven is so awesome, I'm willing to give up whatever little marginal complex flavor gains you might get uh, if you let it sit for a couple days. Okay, well that's it. Um, man, maybe I'll have one more at the end after I cut it up. Okay, see. Okay, it's uh, 7 16, so I'm okay, letting it sit about 15 20 minutes. Got distracted. And it's time for breakfast, so here's the loaf. So, came out okay. Um, yeah. Like I said, maybe should have let it bake for about 5 6 minutes less, but not a big deal. Well, let's head up. So, so I guess, huh. I've been always trying to get this weird holy bread just to try. I generally have a slightly denser crumb. And I guess the solution is to use bread flour. Bread. Mm. So here you go. Okay, well, let's see how long it takes for me to package up and get it out. But uh, today is April 5th, right around my mom's birthday. Happy birthday, mom. And um, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Catch you around. Bye-bye.